feet. Um, hope everybody can hear me. Uh, can you move a little bit closer? Uh, I'd also like to thank everybody for coming out uh, to this event. Hopefully you get um, a lot out of it here. My job is to talk about a little bit about the recruiting process and maybe some advice on how to navigate the next year or, or two years for you guys, okay? Um, initially, why don't I just talk about the recruiting process here, all right? And the reason why I would address here is because this is the bar that you would have to clear. This is probably one of the highest bars academically, okay? There's a lot of high academic schools here that are watching you guys. They're gonna be right in line with us, all right? So my advice to you would be to set your goals for those schools academically, all right? And if you fall a little bit shy of them, then you're probably gonna end up someplace great no matter what, okay? First of all, when we go through the recruiting process, uh, we at the Ivy League are not allowed to speak about any of our recruits with admissions until July 1st entering their senior year, okay? That means if guys are going through the recruiting process as a junior, there's really no feedback officially from admissions on how, how they're gonna work out in our process. What that means is it's a little bit gray uh, when, we, when we look at a kid as a junior, um, but we have to be like junior admissions counselors a little bit and figure out what it's gonna take. Luckily, I've been at Yale 18 years, um, so I've got a pretty good idea how it works. Um, first things first, uh, at a, most schools in the country, in order to, to get a seat at the table to even look at this place, you gotta be in the top 10% of your class, okay? If you're not in that top 10%, it better be a ridiculous powerhouse high school, okay? Or you better have some sort of uh, excuse for what happened one of those years. My son just finished his freshman year, okay, in high school, and every one of his friends hears from his, their parents that the freshman year doesn't count. Don't worry about it, the freshman year doesn't count. How that came about, I have no idea. All right, I know we're past this for you guys, but the freshman year counts, all right? When you're looking at schools like this, they look at everything. Eighth grade doesn't count, unless you took some advanced classes in your eighth grade year in the high school, okay? So you want a consistent, all right, record of achievement through the whole way through high school. Just about anybody can walk into an SAT or ACT and get lucky, all right? It's very different to have a consistent record of, of success in, in four years of high school than just showing up and taking a test, okay? So I would encourage you to keep that track moving up the entire time. If you have a great freshman year, an okay sophomore year, and a weaker junior year, that's not gonna look good, all right? If you have a freshman year where you kind of struggle, but you show uh, that, you're, that you can correct that your sophomore and junior year, that's going to work out better for you, all right? Admissions counselors want to see you're in a process of growth, all right? And they want to see you continue that here. They don't want to see a kid who's really smart, who got lazy as his high school years went on because it was too, too easy for him, okay? Um, to give you an idea, we are test optional this year, all right? The testing became very difficult nationwide with the pandemic. So Yale and other schools have gone to a test optional for the time being. We think that might go away, will probably go away in the next year, okay? Because testing in the SAT, I don't know how they're gonna do this. Uh, the SAT and the ACT are gonna move eventually to an online system so nobody can say that they couldn't test. All right, so it's probably coming back. To that point, um, SAT-wise, you know, we have 10 guys in our class. We got one guy with the high 12s, all right? We got two guys in the 1300s, we got three in the 1400s, and the balance are in the 1500s. That's what we get, okay? That's, the, that's what we're allowed to work with, all right? And we don't balance one guy for another guy, that, that type of thing, but the entire class in aggregate has to look something like that, okay? Um, obviously, that's, that's, it's difficult to put together a really good team with those kinds of numbers. You gotta find guys that are great at lacrosse, uh, have great grades, and also can, can hit the testing. It's not always easy to find that, okay? Um, you know, for you guys, like I said, we are test optional. You're gonna be headed into these schools. Some of these schools might be test optional uh, in this next year. Um, I would not use that as an excuse to not take tests, okay? If you can get to an SAT, ACT, do it. You don't necessarily have to report it, but it's a good, it's a good experience and it's something you should do. All right, you're gonna look like you're challenging yourself. Um, we have, when we look at a recruit, 
Um, we have to go through admissions. We can't just say, hey, this kid's a, a 2.30 AI and, and, and off we go. Do um, you guys know what the AI is, by the way? Raise your hand if you know what the academic index is or have an idea. Okay, so the academic index is a number from 0 to 240. If you have perfect grades, you got 80 points for that. If you have perfect SATs, all right, you get another 160 points for that. So if you're a perfect student, you have 240 points. So you're either 0 to 240. Either you're super brilliant or you're a chair, all right? We have to average roughly uh, 220, okay? Uh, the entire league has to average, average a certain amount. So the schools will have to average a number that's representative of the kids they normally take. Okay, I don't want, don't want to bore you with the statistics, but all you guys have an AI, so you'll know kind of where you stand in a normal admissions process at a school like Yale, all right, or the NESCAC schools. And all these coaches that are here know what I'm talking about, and they can tell you, yeah, we normally get guys in this range or whatever. Okay, it's, it's, it's a way to kind of keep every school in, in you know, in a watchdog on every school and the guys they take. All right, so if Cornell normally takes uh, a freshman class, of 216 average, they're gonna have to hit an average for their athletic department at roughly 200. Okay, so it just kind of keeps them in line with what they normally take. Yale takes some super brilliant kids, so we gotta take some slightly less super brilliant lacrosse players. Okay? Um, what was on the academic index? Where was I going with that piece? Oh, so we, we uh, so you got this number. You're a brilliant kid, you've got perfect SATs, perfect grades, and you saunter into admit your admissions interview and you say, I'm a 240, they're gonna love me. I got news for you, it's a beauty contest. There's, oh, I can't even tell you how many 240s are out there. All right, and they don't want a kid to come in with an attitude, thinks it's better than this place, okay? Regardless of what your academic index is, you have to have character, okay? And you have to present well in an interview or your recommendations, those types of things. Okay, so if you're a really bright kid and you walk through your high school like you own the place, I would advise you to change that, all right? And, and get a little more humility, all right? So that when someone recommends you, it's going to reflect that you're a good kid and you work really hard. And yeah, you might be gifted or maybe you're not gifted, but you work really hard, okay? Because that's what's going to get you a leg up with these schools. They don't want a million super brilliant kids. They want all the super brilliant kids that are awesome kids, too. And guess what? They can do that. All right? They can do that. There's plenty of them. It's, like I said, it's a beauty contest. So don't, don't differentiate. Your grades are going to be your grades. Work to the best of your ability. All right? Differentiate, differentiate yourself with character, okay, and hard work. And that will put you in a better position. Okay? It's something you can do today. You can improve upon that today. You can't get your SATs better today. Unless you read a book after the session or something, I don't know. But you can get better at that other stuff today. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, our recruiting process, as I mentioned, you, 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 you're going to apply in the fall and, and you might have an interview. Um, but the, for us, the biggest thing for us uh, is the transcript. The second most important part is the recommendations. Okay. The third would be probably the interview and the testing after that. The recommendations are huge, okay? They're huge. Um, also, the writing is, is in there as well shortly after that. Um, but that's something that you can probably um, put a little polish on with, with a lot of work. Your recommendations are going to be probably the most important thing because, because it's not like an interview where you show up in an hour and you impress somebody because you wear a nice tie. Your recommendations are people at a high school that they know about, okay? And they, they've... They've talked to a million times and they say, this kid is a great kid, you gotta take him, he's, he's, he's gonna help you, okay? Um, touch on uh, leadership a little bit, coach, is that good? Yeah. Okay, so guys, you're, at these, you're going to these showcases and tournaments and all this stuff all summer long. I'm gonna tell you what, um, what we look for. People ask me all the time, what does Yale want in a recruit? And, we get out here, we see a sea of guys, and we see guys that are big and small and fast and skilled and, you know, not skilled and, and all that, okay? Um, we see guys all summer long, and the things that stick out to me more than anything else, 
and maybe I have a problem, okay? But I don't like it when kids don't play hard. Okay, once again, these are things you can fix today. My advice to you is get a film of yourself playing, okay? Get a film of yourself playing and watch it critically. Not the goals you score, not the ground balls you got, not the saves you made, the face-offs you won, okay? But watch yourself critically and what you're doing, okay? And tell yourself, am I playing hard enough? All right? And if you're a lot like me, I've never seen a film of myself playing. It's been a long time. I've never seen a, self, a film of myself playing that matched up to what I thought in that moment. Like when I played in a game, I'd be like, oh, I, I think I played pretty well. And then I would watch it. I'd be like, my God, I don't even try. I don't even try. Okay? We take kids with unbelievable motors here. All right? We want kids who are a complete psycho on the field. And I would, I would advise you that if you get out of a game, okay, in the summer, if it's roughly an hour game, and if you're not on the ground four times in that game, you are not playing hard enough. And if you're not playing hard enough, you are insulting this game. Any, any position, goalies included. All right? If you're not on the ground four times, not hard enough. That's what we're looking at, okay? That's what I'm looking at. Is this kid selling out for ground balls? Is he hustling? All right, is he challenging himself in this moment? And get, guess what? Pete and I did not do this growing up. When we grew up, we played summer ball with our friends, and, and that was it. You guys go to nine and 10 tournaments and exhaust yourself all summer. It's difficult. I can only imagine how hard that is, okay? But, but, you're all doing it, okay? So most of those kids are not gonna sell out every game. You could differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself from that, if that makes sense, okay? Like I said, play as hard as you possibly can and coaches will notice that. We notice if you're wearing a jersey, number 88's walking off the field and mom is carrying his bag. I will stop and open up my book to cross that kid off. Mom shouldn't carry bags. Dad shouldn't either, but definitely not mom. Okay, carry your own bag. Um, don't talk back to your parents in front of a coach. If you talk back to your parents, what are you gonna say to me when the time comes? All right, we see these things all the time. It's not how many stick tricks you can do. It's these things, okay, that we see when you think we're not watching that matter more than anything else. Because everything that happens out here, we're delusional enough to think that we can fix it every time, which we can't. But we can come damn close, okay, with kids that care, that won't talk back, that want to carry their own bag, that hustle, okay, and want to be a part of what we're about. Cool? Coach, that's all I got. Fellas, thank you for coming out, and enjoy the rest of your summer.